hey hello and welcome today we're going to be learning how to animate react applications with frema motion and we'll be working on a contact cards application you can see our contact cards and notice the transition effect that happens when we try to load up the contact card so look at our contact cards opening up and you can see that and when we click on any of this contact card see that there's a model that pops up displaying more details about a particular user and that also comes with the transition effect so this makes application look really lively it gives it that native feel so there's one for opening it up and there's another one for exiting it so look at that and we can search for different contacts and notice the transition effect still happens here so we're filtering through the data and we still have all that this is what we're going to be working on today and we'll be doing this with frema motion so here we have frema motion this is a motion library for react and the first thing we want to do when we come back to the frema motion website is click on this link check out the api here you'll find every information you need on how to work with the api um it might not be the easiest to get used to but that's why we're doing this tutorial video so that you will learn how to work with this documentation and work with frame motion and react applications to animate your react applications create a beautiful transitions um beautiful effects and all that we'll do this with frame motion today so here's the application we're working on and you can see that right now there's no animation so we reload our application try to load up the data and that comes without any kind of animation effect we want it to look like what we saw earlier in the video now i'm going to leave a link to the current state of this application in the description of this video in case you want to build along with me which i recommend that you do in our repository you'll find both the completed project and the initial project so when you convert to the react contact card repository navigates to the frame tutorial starter and then you'll be able to work with me in this tutorial if you want to learn how to build this application so this tutorial starter this is already a contact cards application without the animation effect and without the frame functionality if you want to learn how to build this application with react and tailwind css I have a tutorial for that so please check it out in my youtube channel now let's get started all right over to our code editor you can see that we have our application running and when we click on the local host link here we have our application without the animation functionality right now we have our react application and you need knowledge of react to follow along with this course You'll also see usage of um, React hooks like use effect and use state, use effect and use state, and use fetch with the React fetch hook package. But you might not need knowledge of that to follow along with this course. Remember, if you want to build this project from scratch, I have a tutorial for that. You'll find the link in the description of this video. This is our contact cards model. So you can see line 55 to line 58 this is the contact cards model remember that when we click on the contact card we want a transition effect to happen when this model opens up and we want a transition effect when the model leaves or oh, we're going to be doing that in this contact cards model if we click on it you can see the model right here so the contact model or gsx file or we'll also be working with the contact cards component you can see that on line 49 this contact cards component houses all of our contact cards when we go back to our browser you can see the different contact cards so all these cards are inside the contact cards component what we want to do is animate these cards so that whenever application renders this component the cards show up one by one one after the other in a fading effect we're going to be doing that here and that will also apply when we search for a particular card um, when we're trying to filter through list of data while the data is being shown to us there's a kind of animation effect so we're going to be doing that with the contact cards um, the JSX component back to our IDE let's start by installing Frema motion you can use whichever text editor you want I'm using a webstorm um, we'll come over to the terminal and npm i-s Frema motion all right that installs Frema motion we can close our terminal and you'll be able to see Frema in the package of json file so when we come over to dependencies on line 10 look at Frema there the version 4 is installed for us 
over to the contact cards component we're going to start by importing motion from Freema so on line one let's import a motion from Freema motion and that's it this motion object houses the different tags from Freema so you can see our application currently has like this button tag so the cards are wrapped in the button tags because the cards are clickable now these different tags can be found inside this motion object so if we want to animate this button tag for example we want to get the button tag from motion and that'll be motion.button if you want to do the same thing for the img tag fit caption tag or a div tag we'll have to use motion.div so it's going to be um, a tag and then motion.div or motion img or motion.span and so on so that's it we have motion.button right here which we want to animate since our button tag is from motion we can go ahead and add extra props or extra attributes to this tag in order to animate this button tag remember the button tag represents each card we're going to start from the initial attribute so this is initial and this is going to represent the initial state of this button tag this card um how do you want a card to be once it opens up once it shows up before the animation starts what do you want it to look like uh, we can do that inside this initial attribute or inside this initial prop and for a card we want it to have a fading effect so it goes from opacity of zero to opacity of one for initial we create an object inside of this prop and we start with opacity zero inside of this object you can decide to specify any other um, look you want for this card so you can decide to give it an initial height you can decide to give it an initial width or, or whichever css property you'd want for the styling and that goes inside initial right now what we want is initial of zero and finally we want it to get to one so from opacity of zero to one that's the fading effect the next thing we'll need is the animate prop and inside this animate prop we can now define the different state of our card during the animation so for animate we have opacity first of all um it starts from zero so this is going to be an array and it starts from zero and then goes to one you see that so this is like a fading effect we want a card to start from zero and then go to one from being not visible to being very visible let's see what we have in our browser and back to our browser we reload and you can see that for our cards you can see the effect we have right there let's reload again look at that that's the fading effect so it starts from opacity of zero and then goes to one you can get creative you can um, decide to use other style methods so instead of opacity 0 to 1 you can decide to use skill let's go back to our editor for skill we can start with this so initial is going to be um, this is skill initial can be 0 and then we have that for animate so animate starts from 0 the reason we are defining initial on line 11 is because if we don't set the initial skill it's going to take the default skill of the card so you might see um that change very quickly you open up your application and the first thing you see is that a big shape of the card and then it goes to zero what we want is for it to start from zero that's why we're defining initial on line 11 and then on line 12 we're now saying for the animate functionality this is skill and then this is an array of the different steps the different stages so uh, we want to start from zero and then we can go to two and then we can come back to one so zero to one and frame motion is going to do its job using spring physics so let's go back to a browser and test this out <laughs> look at that so it starts from zero gets to two and back to one and this is what we did for the um modal so if you go back to the first part of this video you see the effect we had on the modal that's with scale started from zero we went to two and then back to one so like a spring bouncing these are the different things you can do with frame motion really you can get as creative as you want um you can do zero something zero then two two and one what's going to happen is it is going to start from zero get to two and stay there for a while and back to one that's the way this works if you want to see the different options you have um, in webstone for example i don't know about other editors i think a vs code should have that you hit control and then the space bar 
then you can see like the different options pop up so these are the different things you can try out um you can decide to do for go for box shadow box sizing bounce center and all that so these are like normal css properties and that's for that we have for initial um we we'll go back to opacity for uh, cards opacity of zero and then animates we still have opacity of zero and one nice there's one more thing though let's go over to the finished application now this is the finished application when we reload our page for the cards to pop up you see the way they come in so it's not just fading in it's like doing that one after the other like um, a counting row so it starts on the first one then the next one and on to the last the way we can do that is through the transition prop or uh, we can come over to line 13 and add the transition prop and inside of our transition prop or we can specify how we want the transition effect to happen for a card so inside of transition we can have duration and for duration you can specify how long you want this animation to take place we can have zero we can have 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 and we can have one what we want for our application is 0 0.5 if you want to know more about these different props, please check out the Frema Motion API. You can convert to this Frema Motion API and search for whatever prop you want, whatever effect. So for transition, we search for transition and you can see transition popping up right there. We'll click on it and we have a guide for transitions. So a transition is an object that defines how values animate from one state to another. This object can contain orchestration props like a delay that schedules the animation as a whole. So we have delay right here. You see the examples, there's delay. And there's also um, duration, there's repeat, there's type, there's bounce. We can click on the orchestration props to see the different orchestration props we have for um, transition. So we have delay, a uh, delay the animation by the duration. You want the animation to not happen until a certain amount of time. And that's what we want to do for cards. We want each card to show up after a certain amount of time. The first one starts, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth and all that. We're going to be using delay for this. We'll be using delay and we'll be using duration. Now um, there's delay, stagger children, stagger direction. I've not used all of these myself. I've used only those I find really important for a particular application. There's the repeat um, prop, which you can use to define the number of times you want to repeat the transition. Uh, you can set to infinity for perpetual repeating. So if you want it to keep repeating on and on and on, like the fade in, fade out. So you want it to fade in, fade out, fade in, fade out, fade in, fade out. You can use repeat for that and then infinity or you can have repeat five and all that so right here you see the different props for transition what we'll be needing right now is duration and delay back to a code base right here we have duration of 0 0.5 the next thing we want is delay so how do we ensure that each card only shows up after the previous card we can use the card index for that you can see that we're getting each of our card from an array of data that's the contact list data we have on line 6 and contact list dot map we have um, each contact in this array and index now this index is what we use for um each contact key on line nine so we have one two three four five six seven eight and all that so we can have delay for each of the cards so each card has um delay of its index so the first card has a delay of zero the second card has delay of one two three four five six seven eight and so on let's see what that looks like let's reload our application and look at that so we have the first one the second one the third one the fourth one fifth one and it just keeps going like that but this is really slow what we can do is divide index by a particular number so we want to ensure that the index of each card is higher than that of the previous card which is already the case with the index value we have right now uh, what we just have to do is either index over five um, index over six index over seven eight nine ten and until um, whatever we want to divide it by uh, let's try index over five go back to our browser and you see that that's better so we have one over five we have two over five three over five five over five and so on for our application we're going to use index over ten reload and look at that so that's it that's what we want for our application 
now this works well for us because um the data we have right now is limited to 10 so the data we have that shows up first in our application is limited to 10 so this is going to work well but if you have like a very large amount of data in your application like 100 cards or 200 cards i wouldn't advise you to do this because when your user starts scrolling by the time they get to 20 there's a good chance that the 20th card will not have loaded in that case you can decide to limit the delay to only the first 10 or to only the first 15 or you don't use this effect at all but right now this works for our application and that's it for animating our cards there are also other interesting properties like the drag effect we can have drag and set it to true or false by default it's false but if we want our cards to be draggable we can have drag as true so let's have drag as true right here and we can test that out in the browser so look at that you see that each card is now draggable <laughs> so the, each card is draggable you can drag each card you can also set like a drag constraints for each of the cards to decide where and how you can drag this card so if you want the, to drag the card in only a particular direction you can set that using um, the drag constraints props um, if you want the card to return to its position whenever you drag it you can set that using the drag elastic prop so you'll find more details of that in the documentation right now we won't be needing this effect for a card it's not the best um, in this situation because notice that whenever we drag a card uh, we are also triggering the modal so that's going to be really distracting even though it's kind of fun that's it for animating our cards the next thing we want to do is animate the modal or we want an animation when the modal opens up and when the modal closes up so let's see how we can do that okay over to the contact modal.jsx file you can see a modal's return jsx code that's from line 10 to line 36 i've collapsed the unnecessary details so that we can focus on the main thing a look at our model from line 12 to line 34 so this contains our model you can see the different styles if we scroll down this is an object and this contains the tailwind styles for our application remember if you want to learn how to work with react and tailwind i have a tutorial for that so check it out in my youtube channel now what we want to animate is this modal div you can see that the div is wrapped first of all in an overlay and then in a container let's see what that looks like in the application all right in the application when we open up a modal uh, you can notice that there's this overlay that makes the background darker so that's what uh, modal is wrapped in and we have the overlay the container we don't want to animate those ones what we want to animate is this particular modal with the white background that's what we want to animate so we're gonna apply our animation to just this modal div on line 12 and remember to make that possible we'll have to use a motion.div so motion from freema motion let's import it at the top of our file import a motion from freema motion so that's freema motion right there on line one we have the import statement and we can go ahead and animate this particular modal let's break it down so that we can see it better we have a modal and we start with the class name which is what's already there for the modal and firstly what we want is to set the initial size of the modal uh, we are going to be using the scale effect for a modal so it starts from like zero and goes to two and then comes back to one actually we want it to start from 0 0.7 so this is scale and we have scale at 0 0.7 so this is going to be the initial size of our modal we can see that in our browser back to our browser we click on the card and look at that so right here we have a modal scaled to 0 0.7 if we want this to start from 0 we can do that we can have scale at 0 and we won't see our model right now until we decide to animate it but i've tested this out and 0 0.7 works um looks better we have initial at 0 0.7 and then we can go ahead to have an animate prop now for an animate prop we have scale this is inside an object and s-c-a-l-e for scale scale starts from 0 0.7 and goes to 1.5 back to 1 1 is the original size of the model we're going to start from 0 0.7 go to 1.5 and back to 1 just like um, a spring back to our browser we click on this model and look at that look at that so we start from 0 
0 0.7 to 1.5 and then back to 1. Let's see what 0 looks like. What if we wanted to start from 0? We click on the modal and look at that 0 to 1.5 and to 1. But I prefer 0 0.7 in this case. I don't want to start from 0. Let's have 0 0.7 right here and 0 0.7 for initial. Now that's it for animating a cards. Oh, we also need an exit animation. So when we click outside of this model, it just closes up, right? We want an exit application and that one, I would like it to go down to zero. That looks really good. To apply an exit animation for a model, we come back to the modal div and we have exit. So this is exit on line 18. And for our exit animation, we want it to scale down to zero. So from whatever it was, scale down to zero. Now, this is not going to work just yet because Freema does not know um, what condition we're using to close this particular modal. Freema knows how to display the modal, but it doesn't know when the modal is no longer needed and when to close the modal. We'll have to do that in the app.js file. We want to wrap this modal. So this is a condition for showing the modal. If there's a selected contact, so when a user clicks on a particular contact, um, the data for that contact is added to the selected contact state. So if there's a selected contact, let us see the contact modal. And if there's no selected contact, uh, we don't see the contact modal. This is the condition we want to show Freema. We want Freema to know that oh, this is how you know that um, this particular modal is not needed anymore and for this case we'll have to wrap this expression line 54 to line 59 we'll have to wrap it in the animate presence component let's import that from frame i want to do this on line one import animate presence from frame motion so animate presence right there and we want to import this from frame motion okay that's what we have there and back to uh, contact modal let's wrap the expression in the animate presence component animate presence and take this and move it upwards indent and remove line 56 all right back to our browser we click on the card the modal is displayed click outside of it and look at that the modal closes up it just goes away so scales down to zero with the animate presence component and that's about it for animating our contact card application. Freema Motion has a lot of features that you should try out. So please check out the documentation and you see a lot more features than what we've discussed. But what I've shown you is the part of Freema I use the most. So you want to transition from one component to another. You can decide to use the fade effect or you can slide in from the left to the right. So you can have the component start from an initial position outside of the screen and then you move it to a final position that's inside of the screen. So that's how you do the slide effect. You can have the fade effect. You can have a scale effect. You can have a rotate effect and so on and so forth. So this is you using your knowledge of um, CSS styling and then you add that inside your Freema Motion component. You can check out the example section to see different examples of animations with Freema Motion and React. So look at this right here for rotate and scale um, variants and all these different animations. So far, we've been able to learn how to set up Frema Motion with our React application and how to animate our React apps with Frema. We've seen how to animate our contact cards application, um, models, exit animations and all that. Feel free to check out the repository for this project and try to build it yourself. If you want to build the whole project from scratch, I have a tutorial for that and I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. I really need it. I really, really need it. See you.